Hello, my name is Veer Animus of VA Games, and this is episode 2 of my Let's Play Mega Man X video series. In the last episode, X was nearly destroyed by the Maverick Vile, but was rescued by Zero. In this episode, X travels to an abandoned missile base in the South Pole area to hunt down Chill Penguin. As briefly mentioned in the previous video, Dr. Kane attempted to analyze and reproduce X's design, which resulted in the creation of the entire Reploid race. Reploids, which are replica androids based on X's design, share X's ability to think, feel, and make decisions. However, due to imperfections in Dr. Kane's reproduction efforts, Reploids are susceptible to corruption through either viral defects or simply free will. This usually manifests itself in the belief that the human race is inferior to the Reploid race, and even further, that the human race is a direct threat to the Reploid race. These violent Reploids became known as Mavericks, and this is where the trouble begins. Just like Sarah Connor didn't believe the threat of Skynet was truly over after the events of Terminator 2, neither did Dr. Light truly believe that the world would allow X to choose a life of peace and serenity. Dr. Light's basic design of X was martially minimalistic, because he had hoped that X would awaken in a future in which his weaponry would not be required. Light adhered to the old adage, expect the best, prepare for the worst, and hid upgrades to X's systems throughout the world such that X could seek them out in a sort of as-needed basis. Before I continue, I would like to point out that this element of game design highlights the idea that form follows function, and is the fundamental reason I favor classical gaming to many of the modern releases. Game developers today place far too much emphasis on graphics and storytelling, and not enough on making sure that the game is fun to play. Dr. Light's upgrade capsules are hardly conducive to the story. Their placement is completely counterintuitive in most cases, and impossible in many others. How could Light have hidden one of his capsules aboard Storm Eagle's airship if it didn't exist yet? Furthermore, what would stop others from locating the capsules either to try to use them in some way, destroy them, or even just relocate them? Capcom understood that it would be impossible to preserve their game design concept and answer those questions with a perfectly coherent story. They were given limited means and had to prioritize in the distribution of their resources. They kept the upgrade capsules as they intended them to be, formulated a paper-thin story to explain it, and they said that's the way it is, and we accepted it because they made a phenomenal game. The first upgrade that we obtain gives X one of the most important features of the X series, the Dash. It is similar in nature to the slide of the later classic series, but is far more effective and versatile, and the entire game was clearly designed around this ability. The capabilities and attack patterns of all the bosses were designed based on the predication that X had the ability to dash around the chamber. And the first of these bosses is Chill Penguin. Formerly of the Maverick Hunter's boring 13th Polar Region unit, Chill Penguin answered Sigma's call to arms and relocated to the 17th Elite unit for some excitement. Chill Penguin is frequently cited as the easiest Maverick boss to defeat in the game. This, coupled with the fact that the stage has the most important and blatantly unavoidable upgrade, makes Chill Penguin almost exclusively the first target on X's hit list. All of his attacks are highly telegraphed and easy to avoid, even with subpar reaction timing. Occasionally, after creating the ice statues, Chill Penguin will jump to a hook on the ceiling. This causes a wind to blow in the direction Chill is facing. This not only impedes your movement, but causes the statues to slide across the floor. You can prevent this effect by shooting him off the switch before the gust is triggered. Either way, Chill Penguin will fall quickly, and when he does, you'll get the Shotgun Ice, which is a weapon eerily similar to the Ice Cracker from the Mega Man 7. This weapon is strong against Spark Mandrill, but for the sake of efficiency, our next target is Storm Eagle. Until next time, thanks for watching.